All right, welcome back to Flock of Socks, the podcast, episode 115. Today on the show, in housekeeping, we give you guys some updates on the Israel-Hamas fighting, and we also play a few rounds of Is It Racist? Then, in Cringe of the Week, we show you the different ways parents handle their trans kids. And in Urban Decay, we explain what per capita means, because some people don't seem to get it. And on top of all that, we're giving you guys a chance to break a world record. All this and more is Fluckus Talks, a podcast, episode 115, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And action speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. It's Fluckus Talks, a podcast featuring Richard Rappel. Right, one for one on the intro as always guys this week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at my patriot supply are you prepared for the unthinkable ahead we need to pray for the best but prepare for the worst which is why i'm telling you it's time to pick up some emergency food kits right now you'll save 25 percent on a three-month emergency food kit from my patriot supply by going to my website preparewithfleckus.com These three-month emergency food kits give you delicious meals and over 2,000 calories a day, so you can eat good while everyone else is panicking and combing over empty shelves. If you order by 3 o'clock today, you will get same-day free shipping as well. Preparewithfleckus.com is the website. Go pick up your three-month emergency food kits now. It's better to have them and not need them than to need them and not have them. Preparewithfleckus.com is the website. 25% off three-month emergency food kits. Preparewithfleckus.com is the website. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to My Patriot Supply for your supporting. Thank you, My Patriot Supply. Now more than ever, it's good to have emergency food. All right. We have some updates. Israel Hamas stuff is obviously popping off. Today is the day of terror that Hamas called for. Head on a swivel. Head on a swivel out there. Yeah, definitely a day to keep your head on a swivel. I've noticed a lot of celebrities are chiming in. Oh, yeah. On the situation in Israel, but like no one really knows what they're talking about. Of course. So a lot of celebrities will post and then like delete their post five minutes later because of all the bad comments on mm-hmm. either side. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of like it makes you realize like we don't really need to hear from everyone. I, that, and that's a common theme. Not everyone needs to do everything. You know, Matt yeah. Damon. He doesn't need to weigh in. I mean, unless he wants to say, like, America, no intervention, then Matt Damon, you're free. Yeah, exactly. We don't need to hear from everyone. If you're a stupid girl who thinks she's an influencer, we don't really need your half-baked opinion. Guys follow you because you work out in your underwear and post pictures of it. Yeah. Don't and and you post an angle that you really know what you're doing with. So yeah. let's let's stick to that. No Israel Hamas, no Middle yeah. Eastern relations stuff. Exactly. We don't really need to hear your international rela- relations opinions on this ancient blood feud. And that, exactly. <laughs> and that's what it is. And people, you know, obviously, you know, obviously people talk about, oh, they did this. These are the atrocities. And then that side is saying, well, these are the atrocities from last month. Mm-hmm. And then the cycle continues. And it's the Hatfields and McCoys. It's Yeah, and the cycle continues for a long time. Thousands? Yeah. Thousands of years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And our take, which is the correct one, obviously we're never going to warmonger. Uh, we wish the best for the innocent people on both sides. Terrorism and innocent killing is obviously bad. And that's yeah. something we've seen. That's always bad. Other than that, I'm not really involved is kind of how I'm seeing it. Exactly. We have our own Hamas back home, people that want us dead. But we also literally have Hamas here uh, yeah. in the United States. So we have our own things to worry about. Uh, they're about they're a finger snap away from going global with whatever they want to do. And we'll see. The release of this episode is 11 a.m. We'll yeah. see what happens on the Day of Terror. Yeah, same with Russia, Ukraine. Not our fight, not, not, really, not really involved. And you know, exactly, and we're consistent with that. And you know, um, Dan Crenshaw talks about like, oh, our allies, we need to support our allies and stuff like that. And technically, he's right in an international relations standpoint, like mm-hmm. America needs to show strength. We need to do this. It's like not when inflation's fucking this bad, mm-hmm. not when the border's wide open. There's kind of an order of operations here. And I'm not really worried about exuding American strength on the international stage when a used car is 30 grand. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, called, we got some other stuff going on. Exactly. And it's like, Oh dude, if we were d- drilling our own oil and we were richer than ever, and uh, the price of a hot dog everywhere was what it was at Costco. 
all right, run a, run a few ships in the Mediterranean. Who else can we help? Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> but um, And then also in terms of that, we need to show American allies how strong we are. Imagine if you borrowed 20 bucks from me and it's like, we're a, we're a $20 borrow ally. And, but every time you borrow 20 bucks from me and I haven't asked you one time, mm -hmm. is that great? Is that great? Sounds like a one way street, you know? Yeah. And it is what it is. Keep but. in mind too. Also in these areas, the IQ levels, mm. like I think the Palestinian IQ average is like 70 or 65, which is worse than Forrest Gump. <laughs> so something to keep in mind. It's not, it's not the same as here. Uh, you know, it's a far ways away and we should keep it that way. And also keep in mind, the deep state wants World War III really bad. Mm. So I think that's kind of what they're going to try and escalate this to. And to get everyone on board for a World War th World War III, they're probably going to need to nuke us. They're gonna I actually, nuke, they're going to probably use uh, some sort of nuke. Yeah, I don't know. And this is, we've had this talk. I actually disagree with you. I think the deep state wants to sell a record number of missiles. They don't want nuclear war. Nobody wants nuclear war and uncertainty and retaliatory shit, but they want to sell a lot of 100K missiles. That's my yeah. take. On I it. take it a little further where I think they want World War III so they can cancel the 2024 election. Yeah. Cernovich had a good tweet about what's going on. That kind of sums up our view, too. He said, the left spent the weekend finding ways to support Hamas. The right had a difficult and nuanced conversation of eradicating terrorism while not harming innocents. Not hard to see the evil uh, and good at work. Left is too far gone. We must take power for humanity. I agree with that. And then Chicago BLM posted, um, I guess, in solidarity with the Palestinians. But then they posted the picture of the hand glider which was like the terrorist attack. Yeah. That's not, guys, that, that wasn't the correct, that's not the Palestinians. That's not the correct take, but that's their take, you know? And that's the whole point. Um, I, I like it because it's a true mask off moment, you know? And yeah. you have the guys, the previous Jewish supporters of BLM who are like, what? I will yeah. never support BLM ever again. So, yeah. So I, I could have told you that they were, what did you think decolonizing meant? You know, that's the whole point. Right? Yeah, we do have that before and after from that guy. Yeah. And it says, I will never stop saying Black Lives Matter. And might even get a shirt myself. Might even get a shirt myself. And then fuck them. Maybe the right was right about Black Lives Matter. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to be consistent, you know. Um, and Yeah, exactly. And then there was another tweet, too, right there. What does that say? You're making me read this? You're the one who put this in here. <laughs> well, what does it say? Uh, the tiny voice that says Jews do seem uh, to control a lot of industry slash power is the same voice that says black people do seem to commit more crimes and Muslim people do seem to commit more terrorist acts. If you knew the last two are bullshit, please acknowledge the first is too. All right. Well, let's not, uh, let's not get too far into that one. We can skip that let's one. Let's just move on. Yeah. Let's, let's move on to the border, which is kind of related um, the board <laughs> put me into the reading chair. <laughs> All right. Well, I, don't know. I should have let you stutter over that. I don't know what that what that last tweet even meant. I, yeah, I didn't I can't, fully I don't digest know. it. I have a 70 IQ. I'm from Palestine. All right. Let's move on. Uh, all right. We have a border update. Obviously, a lot of migrants are here illegally still millions and millions. And there was an update that was given from this guy on, I think, Twitter. What does it say? Uh, yeah, this is from Chicago. So we've obviously covered Terminal 4 in O'Hare and all the migrants who are sleeping at literal police stations. So this guy said, just an FYI for those around the CPD stations that are housing migrants. Instead of hanging on corners asking for money, they are now roaming the neighborhoods. I was walked up on this afternoon. There are folks saying they are knocking on doors asking for money and goods. Yeah, so that's not a good sign. A lot of people come here and they have no ways of making money. They have no plan and they come from third world countries where they do third world shit, which is why I've been telling my family and close friends it's time to be prepared. Home invasions, I think, are going to be going up. Petty crimes, robbery, brazen, middle of the day type shit is going to keep going up. Yeah, It's time to have some self-defense stuff prepared at home. Get a gun. And yeah. then also, um, yeah, they actually can go door to door, but that's Halloween. So they got to wait for that. Yeah. Nobody's just going to give you food or shit. Exactly. So. And Bill Malusian had a nice update, too, about special interest people apprehended. Yeah. New internal C uh, CBP data provided and confirmed by CBP sources reveals that thousands of special interest aliens from mostly Middle Eastern countries have been apprehended by Border Patrol while crossing into the U.S. illegally over the last two years. Syria, 538. Yemen, you know Yemen, mm. 139. Iraq, 123. Afghanistan, 
crazy numbers, 6,000. Uh, Lebanon, 164. Egypt, Pakistan, Mauritania, Uzbekistan, Turkey. Turkey, 30,000. Turkey, the Turks. And these are the last two years. These are special interest people, and that's who's been apprehended and caught. How many people do you think got in? I think probably the same amount, if not more, have gotten in. I think iceberg theory. You see the top 10% only. So extrapolating 300K from Turkey are here. Yeah, you know? exactly. And there was a tweet about the FBI watch list and who's on it. It says, guess which one is on the FBI watch list? The, the Mima from January 6th. And then we got some guys here with the masks supporting Hamas. The masked Palestinian slash Eagles fan. Yeah, Eagles fans. They're, go birds. <laughs> And then Ann Coulter had a good tweet that kind of summed up what's going on, too. It says, when Muslims in Canada drove their trucks through the streets celebrating the slaughter in Israel, you figure Justin Trudeau froze any of their bank accounts? Or no? He did all the freezing for the truckers. Nope. Who wanted to, you know, just to not va- Not to be forced vaccinated and lose their jobs? Yeah, yeah those exactly. Guys. So that's what's going on. Uh, let's move on. Okay. You ready to move on? Yeah. We have a new poll out of Pennsylvania. That shows Trump has a massive lead. I think about 10 points. Can you give that a read? Yeah. uh, Emerson has Trump at plus nine in Pennsylvania. But how legit is it? Looking at the cross tabs, I can see it says 18 to 24-year-olds. This is from Nuance, bro. 18 to 24-year-olds vote Trump over Biden by 10 points. Do we think Zoomers are this conservative in PA? It's possible. Other point is we see Biden vote amongst blacks only at around 60%. It will certainly be higher for this. So So I I actually agree with both of his assessments there. Like, I don't know if Zoomers are going to be that high, and I don't know if blacks will either. But higher than expected. Yeah. I mean, Which is why they need World War III to avoid the election. Mm. Right? No, I I already (laughs) told you. I disagree with you on that. They want to sell missiles. They want their friends who donate to them so that they can get elected. Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, all those. The guys who make the dog robots. Money goes up. Boston Dynamic. They want to sell a lot of high-end missiles is what I think. All right. So we disagree, but hopefully none of us are right. Yeah. Everything goes back to normal. I think I'm already right. Like, that's what's going to happen. But I don't know. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Yeah. It's 50-50 between us. Nuclear war ending, election suspended, or a lot of missiles, lining pockets, uh, same old continuation that we've seen. It's basically 50-50. Basically 50-50. All right, let's use this opportunity to tickle the post. Help us juice the algo. You guys have been so good. Leave comments. Make sure you like the video. Leave comments again. Make sure notifications are on. Get involved in the conversation in the comments section. Goes a long way. Talk a little shit to someone. Start a fight in the comment section. Give me yeah. us 80 replies back and forth. Yeah, get into a fight. Slander someone. All right, we are in our doppel section. It is Friday. We don't do doppels anymore, but if we did... These would be our doppels. We got, is that me? That's you and some sort of advertisement on YouTube. Is that really me? Yeah, that is really you. And then this one's you too. No, no, that one's you. (laughs) I put that in. Man breaks into Burger King and drinks gallons of deep frying oil. Wow. I've seen you do that. I think I've seen you do that. That's why you've been so greasy on the show. (laughs) Because all the the oil's coming out. All right, here's me again. Latino. Angel Molina. Here's you again, again. I'm a woman with a beard. Yeah, that does kind of look like me. Is this someone doing AI with you? I hope not. Big looks like I got hatched from a big bird egg. <laughs> that that doesn't look like me. That looks like me. This, this guy, guy on the hinge. Yeah, Bumble or something. That does look like me. Yep. I wish I looked like that guy. I know. That's it shows you what it could be. Um, and then what do we have? A couple more. Oh yeah. The Pakistani the Hulk. Strong, the strongest man in the world, Pakistani Hulk. He moves cars, he picks stuff up. He arm wrestles three men at once. He picks people up like they weigh nothing. That's me. And then here's another Middle Eastern one of you. Yeah, there's me playing guitar in my my costume. Yeah, that's the Hamas Memorial Fundraiser concert. Oh. And I'm here's kidding. you. That's, yeah, there you go. There's you with your trying glasses. Trying to pass. You're just trying to pass. What Same can glasses. I do to pass? <laughs> All right, now we're in shout outs. We have a lot of shout outs to get to. Uh, we had a pumpkin carver, Ashley uh, carved a pumpkin for us. And we also want to shout out her husband, Nick. Happy 37th birthday to him. Uh, we also had a wedding shout out. This pu- I- I'm not ready to move on from the pumpkin. That's pretty good. The pumpkin is crazy. Best new podcast of all time. It looks like that looks like really me and really. You. I know. That's crazy. really impressive. Yeah. Let's slow down on the shout outs. I'm going yeah. too fast. Um, well, just for the pumpkin. Some of these. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. 
some of these other couple of rock kicks, you know, whatever. We, we can speed through them. Yeah. All right, we have some birthday shout outs. Shout out to Tommy. His birthday is today. Um, that's him with his dogs in our merch, the Fluggest Talks Burger King shirt. Mark. Um, happy birthday to Danny Woods. His birthday is on the 15th. Happy birthday to Christopher. Your fiance, Christina, made this happen. His is on the 15th, too. Happy birthday to Olivia. We missed it on September 26th, and congrats on being pregnant. Uh, congrats to Rob and Penny. They're getting married today. A lot of people getting married this weekend. Yeah. Um, very respected. Uh, this counts as a gift from Steven. This shout out counts as his wedding gift for Rob and Penny. Uh, shout out to Jordy as well. Congrats on your engagement to Aaron. You guys are show watchers. Couples that watch the show stay together. Uh, we are in the background of this company's meeting during a PowerPoint presentation. This one I want to know more about. Somebody put this on. You <laughs> sent this to me and I go, yo, like I ran over and I said, yo, where is this? What are they doing? <laughs> Tell me more. And he was like, oh, I don't know. I didn't ask. It's like a company. Give me <laughs> intel. What happened? Who sent this? Uh, I don't know. It's a company presentation. Um, and we're in it somehow. And we're and in it. These are real one, two, three, four, five, six people and watching those are like this. Old people too. So I, like those are like serious business. Adults. So please, I need to know more. Fleckus didn't give me any intel on that. Yeah. DM me. DM Richard. Tell him what happened. Yeah. Uh, Byron and Britt Graham got married today. Shout out to them. They watch the show. Katie and Ashton got married, and here's Katie watching the show while she gets ready in her outfit. So nice. Very nice. We have someone watching the show on their refrigerator. That one was fascinating. I like that Pretty one. Pretty cool. And then we have a guy who's doing a name reveal for his baby, and they had their names presented on three different hats, and one of the hats is Snarf Snarf. So there's a chance they name their baby Snarf Snarf. So, the, yeah, the other names are Lincoln, Joshua, or Snarf Snarf O'Banion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, you. So... We're hoping for that. Um, and then we also had a wedding for best man speech. Uh, best new couple of all time. Let this play. I'm excited to introduce Karen Everett, the greatest new couple of all time. Woo! Karen and Joshua Everett, the greatest new couple of all time. Did he have a bit of help? <laughs> Karen and Joshua Everett, the greatest new couple of all time. He has, he said, I got a bit of housekeeping. All right, so congrats to them on your wedding. Congrats to Everett. Uh, he's the one who got married. Um, and thank you to Trent. That was Trent who that shouted Trent, us out. Trent and Everett. And then we also have some rock kicks, which we have every week. Um, so we have some people kicking rocks over time. here. Thank you guys for sending that in. And then we also have a drywall shout out. People are putting the show on their drywall and in their interior of their house. Just in any sort of construction projects. They're, they're and then really it gets covered great. up and then someone redoes your bathroom in 30 years and they go, what the fuck? Those two guys are dead now. <laughs> Those podcasters are dead. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Uh, we are close. As, as you guys know. Hey, shout outs are getting out of hand. People yeah. are starting to say, and uh, everyone's got a birthday, everyone's got a wedding. I, I think we're going to have to maybe even press time out. Not time out, but like, you, you got to bring it. You got to show me a video. The pumpkin, hey, the pumpkin and the wedding speech guy, they're up here. Everybody else, right on the drywall? Yeah. You're up there too. You're That's up, permanent. You're right here. You're not a pumpkin carver. You're not like that, but you know. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to get that and off my chest. Happy birthday to everyone else. Um, okay. Oh, and happy birthday to typical liberal. Typical liberal, his birthday as well. Big Instagram account, great friend of us, great friend of the show. Coming his, up soon. I yeah. won't tell which date exactly, but yeah. it's coming up soon. We don't want to dox him. Um, all right. As you guys know, we are always trying to name things snarf snarf on the show whenever there's an opportunity with like a public contest to name stuff. I'm not going to say what, but we are very close on one of them. Oh. And I think we're going to have an announcement by Tuesday's episode. Um, okay. The possum? Uh, no. Okay. It's a mascot for a stadium. Oh. Let's get into some fun stuff. This is page four of housekeeping. Uh, so this is where my favorite stuff is going to be living. The horse lady before and after. Let's get that going. So this lady is singing the national anthem on the horse. And some guy's trying to help her because he thinks the horse is getting out of hand. Grabs the reins. But she's saying, no, thank you. I don't need help. And there's her getting carted off in a, to go in an ambulance. So I guess she maybe did need help. Um, Santa Clara. Yeah. If you California. don't got it, you don't got it. Yeah. If you need help, you need help. Yeah. Don't be a feminist about it. Exactly. All right. First things first, sandwich of fall. 
everyone's getting mad at the French dip idea. Some people like the French dip idea. Who like got this mad? Guy. People are saying French dip. Oh, it's not. A, it's an American. Yeah. You don't like French dip. And then we talked about Rubens last week. But then I said, you know, it can't be on rye, and I barely like Swiss cheese. So people are saying do Rubens anyway. I can't get behind it. A lot of people are saying Thanksgiving sandwich would be good. Yeah, cranberry turkey, cranberry type. Yeah, but I don't like that because I think it'll desensitize us to Thanksgiving. Yeah. So we're not going to do that. I want to float the idea of bread and butter. Mm. No? <laughs> that's unlike – well, that's it. That's like you. Yeah. But uh, it's not really a sandwich, so I don't know. All right. So we'll decide by next week. Keep getting your ideas in. Keep tagging us. This is the last week for submissions. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we're punting to next Friday, and we'll get it figured out by then. All right, let's go to the Bills Goes to Collections meme. This is posted by Chinese Donut Boy. Uh, as soon as a bill goes to collections, it's not your problem anymore. There's a guy in a suit whose job it is to ask you for $100. He went to law school to learn how to be a bum. You're a winner. You don't talk to people like that anymore. Go buy a sandwich. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. That makes a <laughs> lot of sense. It's not your problem. And that was posted by Chinese Donut Boy, who is my literal brother, and also 2000 away from 100 k so he's my brother, which means he's your guys' brother, too. Yeah. Go make sure you follow him on Instagram. He's tagged in the description. All right. World record muffin eater. Another piece of shit from Guinness Book of World Records. This was posted by Guinness Book of World Records Instagram. This is the same girl we showed before. So that's the world record for fastest muffin eating. 15 seconds. Guys, please go beat that. I'm not going to do it myself because it's too embarrassing to disrespect myself and eat a muffin like a fat fuck crazy guy. Just yeah. inhale it. Yeah, yeah, you do that in private. You keep it private. Yeah. It's 20 seconds. You don't rush. You got to keep a difference between personal and private life. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but you guys can easily beat that. And if you want to do a timer, do it. If you want us to add the timer in post, we can do it too. Please beat the 15 second muffin eating record and tag us. Also, what's the standard muffin size? Like, what's what are we doing here? Hey. Guinness is scraping the bottom of their barrel. They're like, what else can we squeeze out of this? 15 seconds and it's a girl and she ate it like that? Guys, put the muffin in front of you. Ready, set, go. You take the muffin, you crunch it into a ball, and you swallow it six seconds. Yeah. So please tag us in that. We'll repost you and let's get some world record uh, show watchers. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Bigfoot got spotted in Colorado, maybe. A train was going by and they saw this. He squats down. Yeah, let me see your camera. I'll do it. That's good. It's just a guy in a ghillie suit. Yeah, it looks like a guy in a Squatch costume. Yeah. So it looks like a Squatch. Um, I don't think it's a real. I don't think it's a real Squatch. Okay. So, it looks you wasted, like guy, so you yeah. wasted all of our time with well, that? Well, I need to I let... I thought you were going to go schizo, and I had to balance you out. No, no. That's just a, either a Squatch or a guy in a Squatch costume. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. But it, I know everyone needs to know this kind of stuff, because when these types of things happen, like, Tucker's not going to show that. Mm. And then in a month from now, they go, oh, we found a Squatch, and it's like, oh, from where? And then yeah. they show this clip. Saw it here first. Hey, for me, personally, to believe in a Squatch, I'm Bane. So show me his body. Show me the body. <laughs> I want to see him on the table. Yeah. I want to see him medically, you know. All right. Last week on the show, we talked about that prompt where you type in a random thing and then say, is it racist into Google? And we had some really good ones. Let's just rip through some of the highlights. Okay. Babies. Are babies racist? Science says everyone's a little bit racist, even babies. Uh, tainted treats. Racism and the rise of big candy. Candy is racist. Candy's racist. Um, is ceviche racist? This is just from a fan of the show. I don't think we got conclusive evidence. I don't think anybody. So ceviche is still, Jerry's still out on ceviche. Yeah, ceviche is clean. Uh, dessert is ordering dessert racist. How food uh, deserts are inextric inextricably linked to racism in America. So that's uh, Google took the typo mm. and they said one letter off. So food deserts instead of dessert. Yeah. Uh, but then Vice came in with eating these foods might make you racist. One so that might be key lime pie or something. Uh, dogs are racist. Systemic racism in the dog community. Gardening is racist. Uh, the article just says gardening is racist. The title. That's it. So thank yeah. you for that. Uh, is hard work racist? The Smithsonian Institute explains that rationality and hard work are racist. 
uh, is food racist? So well, there's multiple angles here. Uh, yes, the answer was yes there. Uh, passports have long been silent tools of racist discrimination. Um, underwear is racist. Bananas are racist. Of course. Um, pooping is racist. Now, yeah. this, this is kind of, is pooping racist? It didn't. Guys, people were sending in screenshots asking the question, and then there wasn't an article that like yeah. confirmed it. So, so pooping is not racist. You kind of missed the prompt, yeah. So pooping was not racist, unless someone can find me an article. Is playing tennis racist? I'd say yes, based on those articles. Yeah. Um, sleep. The sleep gap between white and black Americans causes racial racist. Yeah. Um, the racist history of toilets in America racist. Uh, racist trees. Are trees racist? Yes, there are racist trees. They, they usually separate white from black people. Um, and then here's the, the finishing piece, the last thing that's racist. Why being not racist is racist. <laughs> so you might as well just be racist, guys. Yeah, good luck out there in the minefield. If, if not <laughs> being racist is racist, then you might as well throw everything out, you know? Yeah. All right, so there's the nice section of is it racist? Yeah, tough. I guess everything is. All right, I'm going to bring you guys into on a, a little inside joke we have here on the show. Oh, okay. At night before the release, Richard Ratboy and I meet, and we go over thumbnails. Yeah. And we build the thumbnail. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so for the last month, I've, there was like that episode, like five episodes ago, where I described how to clean shit out of a urinal. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it was like disgusting, right? It was a stupid bit. It was fun, but it was gross. Um, so every night... Because Rap Boy and I, like, we don't dread it, but it is, like, the final thing we have to do is, like, make a thumbnail, and sometimes we don't feel like doing it. And it makes a big difference on the algorithm, and it's, like, you need something snappy and, like, quick, you know, like, phrasing-wise. You need a clean title and then a perfect image, you know, usually mm. higher def performs well, and you need something that fits in the middle of us, and yeah. it's just a logistical nightmare, and I'm always like, okay, what are we doing for thumbnail? And Fleckus is, like, cooking dinner or something. Yeah. And then the last, like, five weeks, I've, like, tried to make him feel better by, by tricking him. Where I'm like, hey man, I actually got the thumbnail squared away, so we're all good on that. And then he's like, all right, what is it? And I bring it over and like I draw it up, and here's the image in the background. And it's always <laughs> clean shit out of a urinal. <laughs> so he wastes my fucking time. So I have a couple options. We we have these three. Number one, how, how to, to clean, clean shit, shit out, out of a urinal. urinal. <laughs> so that's an ongoing joke. And here's the thumbnail picture I show him to ruin his afternoon. All right, let's go to the Aiden dot gym. A y d e n. And then dot actually gym. sometimes. Sometimes he'll also say, like, it'll be late night on a night that it's not a podcast release. And he goes, what are we doing for thumbnail? And it's like, gives me PTSD. Like, I have something else to do. Yeah. So. All right, let's go to the gym. How to work out if you're a leftist. Top workouts to do if you're a liberal. So the vaccine hammer curls. Kneel for the pledges. Count and fake vote curls. <laughs> And Joe Biden hair sniffs. Huh. So these guys are a nice little workout team. A few of them, Aiden.gym, A Y D E N dot gym. Uh, that's pretty funny stuff. They posted a part two, so go follow them for that. All right, we're almost done with housekeeping. Okay. Uh, we watched Mission Impossible the other day. Mission Impossible 2023. Yeah, what's it called? What's the name of the Who, movie? Mission Impossible 2023. Okay. Great movie. We <sighs> liked it. I liked it. They're doing the same bits. They got the mask on and off. Oh, yeah. They love the mask bit. Um, really, yeah, the mask bit, they knew everyone likes that. Tom Cruise is the last true movie star. Yeah. He bangs it every time. He bangs Drives it. the thing off the cliff, does a parachute. Yeah. Um, there is one thing. A lot. There was a lot of pickpocketing. A lot of people, like, just standing there, and then it's like, huh, I got this thing from your pockets. They like, link up with this girl who's like a thief, a pickpocket, and so then it becomes a one-upmanship pickpocket chain, and they must have used pickpocketing in the plot 15 times. Yeah, and they're, everyone's, like, talking face-to-face -face like this, but I guess they're just, like... <laughs> Rifling around in <laughs> like their shit. Digging around <laughs> in their clothes. In tiny girl pockets on tight women pants. Yeah. So like, like, I oh. pickpocketed you. It's like, my shit's skin tight. You were three feet away from me. It's like, don't you feel me kind of <laughs> like going like this? And everyone's like pulling things out, like looking for this. And a lot of important stuff that they needed to track down is being put in outside blazer pockets. Yeah. So there's a key. Like, the whole point of the movie, there's a key that they need to get. And so the key like, is being pickpocketed probably 10 times, switching between people's blazer pockets. And the guy's like, I got the key. 
and he puts it here in like an open and right blazer pocket, and then and he, he walks and he gets out the door. Pocketed <laughs> he gets two pocketed seconds he gets later. pocketed immediately. So, so I, that's the part I don't get. Everyone's just digging around each other's pockets looking for this. Some lazy tropes. I don't yeah, know. A couple lazy tropes. All right, last piece of housekeeping. I picked up my uh, fixed car. Oh yeah. And you, when you pick up the car these days, you have to say. No one from the deep state put anything in this, right? <laughs> did you really say that? You have to. Oh. Because they have to tell you if they did. It's like a police officer. It's like, yeah, to... some weird guy came in who doesn't even work <laughs> Which here. Which they don't. Just had to dig around your car for a day or two. That's why it took so long. Other than that, your car is good. Yeah. So if anything happens to me, we know who put it in. Okay. All right, moving on. Before we get into Cringe of the Week, this week's episode is also brought to you by FleckusTalks.com. Do you want me dead or maybe working at Domino's or too fat to fit in my clothes? Because that's how it feels when you don't join FleckusTalks.com. Richard Rapboy, don't bring me in. <laughs> Richard Rapboy and I work very hard on the show. Would you agree, Richard? Yes. And so does our editor, Nick. Here's a picture of Nick and his family if he'll let us show it. We all work really hard on the show. Each month, we do 14 hours of public content across eight episodes and over four hours of bonus land content behind the paywall, which you can access for $7.50 a month, which is how much you tip the Uber Eats guy. When I was a kid, we used to tip the delivery guy three bucks, but now I guess you have to pay everyone's bills. But I, I, I digress. Where was I? We got to pay the bills. We... <laughs> Join Bonus Land. The first month is free. We have a Discord. Fluckustalks.com is the website. Sign up today. We have a whole backlog of Bonus Lands. Please join. And just so you guys know, I'll be the fucking pizza man. I don't care. I'll be the pizza man. I have the costume. I would just rather do this. <laughs> so please join Fluckustalks.com. Join the community and get all the bonus content that we do and work so hard on every month. We don't ask for much. Fluckustalks.com is the website. It's linked in the bio and the pinned comment. Please go there today and sign up. All right, cringe of the week. We have some cringe stuff. We're going to move a little fast through the first few. Uh, the first clip is uh, the gay ass pep rally. Yeah, there's no audio on this, but this is a high school pep rally where, of course, someone in some type of cat suit, cat woman who's a man, is like doing a table dance or a doing chair. a lap dance in front of everyone. Everyone's cheering. Yeah. And then we have another guy who's a guy in a dress who comes out and is doing like a, a, a an, an inappropriate, provocative dance as a drag queen or something. And the whole school's cheering it. And then we don't forget, 25% of Gen Z identifies as LGBT. Yeah. So this is just mainstream and applauded. That would not have gone down in my high school. No, certainly not. Gay shit like that. Um, all right. And we also have the uh, Spider-Man on the subway. Spider-Man... He's on the subway. Doing a little Spider-Man routine. And everybody's looking and they're laughing. They go, oh, it's Spider-Man routine. And then it turns into gay shit. And look at this guy in the back. He goes, oh, like, oh, Spider-Man. Nope. Oh, it's gay nope. Spider-Man. Oh, it's gay shit. They're doing gay shit in public. So it used to be whatever consenting adults want to do in their bedrooms, not my business. And now we have to watch gay Spider-Man. And the they pep rally, gay Spider-Man. And they ruin a superhero on our subway and they make you watch. Yeah. Get me pictures of Spider-Man. You don't, want twink the, shit. you don't want these twink photos. Um, and they also need to be careful. If you're on the New York City subway, someone from Palestine might fuck you up for that. Yeah, they're everywhere. Not Sleeper yet. cells are out, and they're they're looking. Yeah, not the time to be doing gay shit on the subways. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Let's do the father and son talking about non-binary. He is a transgender. I would say he is transgender. Instead of saying he transgendered last year. I would say... He transitioned last year. Instead of saying he changed genders. He transitioned or he affirmed his gender. Instead of saying he was born a girl. I would say he was assigned female at birth. And you were assigned male at birth and you identify as. Male. And I was assigned male at birth and I identify as. Non-binary. Instead. There you go. So yeah, you could, you could have taught the kid baseball stats. You could have taught him dinosaurs. But no, he needs to learn non-binary because his dad likes to get fucked a little bit. <laughs> his dad's a little gay. So, you know, <laughs> teach the kid all this shit now. Yeah. Uh, his brain could be an encyclopedia of random stuff. You know how moldable kids' brains are and how much of a sponge they are? And instead, you're doing this useless shit that's going to be gone in 10 years. Yeah, exactly. Um, Clearly uh, reading a script, too. Exactly. Off camera, a little teleprompter type yeah. shit. Also, um, r remember back in the day when sometimes lesbian people would say, oh, I'm gay. 
-hmm. Like a woman would say I'm gay, and it was just a one-use word for being attracted to the same sex. Now everybody's just a little gay. All these, oh, I'm non-binary, oh, I'm trans, I'm this. You can just say I'm a little gay. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit gay. I'm not right. Yeah. Something ain't right. <laughs> and uh, you don't need to involve yourself in that because that would be me telling you who I'm having sex with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Keep it to yourself. I'm a little gay. I'm a little gay. Uh, you know, hey, Mike, would you like to date Susie? She's a good friend. I think you guys would get along. Uh, not for me. I'm a little gay. I'm a little gay. <laughs> I'll sit this one out. You know, you don't. we don't need to know. We don't yeah. need to know. And then the, certainly the kids don't need to know. Exactly. And you've seen those flags that are like uh, – uh, non-binary or asexual flag, and then they all have the color-coding meanings that this means this. Mm -hmm. I'm a little gay will suffice. Yeah, exactly. Free tip for me to you guys. There you go. Enjoy it. Uh, the opposite of this kid is Giuseppe's Garage. Uh, it's the father and son who run a mechanic shop. Josiah, what are you doing over here? Still working on this truck? Yeah, I just put the valve gasket on it. It's leaking like buttons, you can imagine. Really? Yeah. What is it? My truck. It's your truck, huh? <laughs> what are you gonna do with it? I'm trying to get the record bar uh, ready for paint. Yeah, we'll get it in there pretty soon. We'll get it there. So that's the opposite. And he, you know what he has? You know what Giuseppe has? Skills. A skill, and he's got a car at the end of it. You know what the <laughs> non-binary kid has? A messed up childhood and a weird dad. Shitty knowledge. Dad who likes to get fucked a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and no car. <laughs> no car. So enjoy life, pussy. <laughs> calling like a seven-year-old a pussy well that's you know that's the other side of it yeah um yeah. and then obviously there's something with the lgbt stuff and how um everyone wants to be a victim and how important that is in their culture uh and there's a tweet that really summed it up it said white plus non-binary equals person of color yeah that's kind of like how they do the math it just shows you know it really boils down to race for these people and whiteness is obviously so bad to them. Uh, it's the most problematic thing you can be. So the only way to get away from the whiteness is to give them a victim status and be like, well, I'm, I'm white, but I'm also a little gay. I'm a little gay. That's the theme yeah. of this episode. You're a little gay. <laughs> <laughs> but not every parent handles it the same, like we see with Giuseppe's dad. This uh, African woman has a son who is becoming trans, and this is how she's handling it. Stop this nonsense of the profile pictures. Your dad in the grave is not happy, so his dad's dead, and that's mm -hmm. why he's acting out. You know, uh, I'm begging you as your only mother but I hand you over to your conscience and to my God that change is bad to good. And then she sends pictures of him. Looks like a normal guy. Nice mom. Who cares? This is the son God gave me, not a girl. I'm sending you all this for you to flash your memory back to what God made you. You are annoyed with me because I called you son. You are still my son. Almighty God will visit you soon. Still love you as my son. Yeah. Ready, ready for the reveal? Here's the reveal. Twink. Mm. Little gay. Well, a lot of gay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. A lot of gay. He's really gay. But that's how the mom's dealing and, with hey, it. Hey, that's, that's actually, you can do that too. I'm really gay. <laughs> you know, I'm a little gay. I, like, and that's the difference between it showing and not. Yeah. I'm really gay or I'm a little gay. We only need two, guys. Yeah, exactly. And as we discussed last week, uh, you can go to a Planned Parenthood or a place like that and get a 30-minute consultation and after 30 minutes, they'll give you the juice. They'll give you the estrogen or whatever you want. Yeah. You're, are you a mildly or even extremely autistic 18-year-old? Come on down to Planned Parenthood. We got estrogen in 30 minutes. <laughs> um, and a, apparently, a lot of the trans hormone therapy is given by nurse practitioners. Well, and that was the example that was used last week. Uh, it was, the kid just talked to a nurse practitioner and was prescribed... Uh, estrogen in 30 minutes, right? Yeah. And I know a lot of nurses, you know, they're nice people. Are they smart like doctor? No. No, they're nice. No. They're nice people, but they're not smart like doctor. And so uh, pr this is from, we were talking to Mimetic Sisyphus about this, and he was the one who brought it to our attention that kind of like nurse practitioners are becoming more and more relied upon, mm -hmm. and which also dovetails with the other information I got about um, <laughs> how, <laughs> that's a Sopranos reference. Um, how uh, America's a pill farm. Yeah. America's becoming one big Ozempic, depression, Viagra, whatever the fuck you want. Skype with a doctor on your phone for 20 minutes and he'll sign off on pretty much everything. And so the nurse practitioner is kind of part of that too. Um, and it's so an opportunity for them to get the pills out. Exactly, exactly. And so the nurse practitioners, I think this is uh, 
choose from family nurse practitioner. This is like a recruitment thing. And it says complete in as few as two years. Take one classes at a time while you continue to work. So you can take online classes for two years, one class at a time. And then all of a sudden you got a script pad. You got an RX mm -hmm, pad. Mm -hmm. um, and so Mimetic Sisyphus, uh, he had a story about nurse practitioners. And we have another one, a woman who killed her kids and was on like 13 different medications, right? Mm -hmm. Benzos, Ambien, whatever the hell uh, else she needed, antidepressants. And she killed her kids. But uh, Mimetic Sisyphus sa said this, nurse practitioner story. Just a few weeks ago in the hospital my wife trains at, a woman who had a previous C-section came in to give birth. Her OB was on leave at the time. The plan was to get another C-section. Since her OB was out, an NP, nurse practitioner, was dealing with the patient. The nurse practitioner convinced the mother to have a vaginal birth. The OB called the patient, explaining that this woman who had complications uh, from her previous birth had a 50-50 shot of uterine rupture during a vaginal birth. So the, I guess they called the OB and the, the nurse practitioner was still trying to uh, recommend something. The patient went with the nurse practitioner's advice. During the birth, the baby's vitals began to tank and the mother started bleeding profusely. Her uterus had ruptured. This left the baby without oxygen for 20 minutes. The baby did not make it. Very sad. So it's that Larry David bit. Pharmacist, doctor. You know, it's like choosing between those. So I don't know. We're, we're not trying to slander. I'm sure there are actually some nurse practitioners in our audience. Of course. But like we want people to be aware of what's going on out there and how you, somebody who takes night school for two years is given an RX pad and going, here you go. S sometimes that makes sense. If you're like, oh, I get this script every time and the doctor's out. Here's the nurse. Yeah. Doing you know? the same exact thing the doctor would do. Last month and no, there's no change. But like. I don't really like that sort of decision making, and I just wanted to make the audience aware. Of course. Um, so yeah, be on the lookout for nurse practitioners, and then I think they might even it might even count as a PhD. So they get walk around wearing a white coat that Ooh. says NP on it. I'm a doctor. Oh, I'm trying to look like a doctor. Yeah. Um, so just be on the lookout. I don't know. It's I'm not slandering, but you know, America's one big pill farm. Doctors like to take time off. Be weary of who you're getting really important, especially life or death, birth, you know? Yeah. Let's go with MDs, guys. Because there's malpractice even with MDs. So. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's there move on. Last piece of cringe is not related to the gay trans shit. Um, it's just this woman who was doing like a slam poetry thing. Uh, and it's about how she needs to change her voice around to be less black, she says. It is ever beautiful in its boldness, never drowning in self-pity, this voice. It's indicative of where you are from, but that should have no relevance because your home of Harlem should not be indicative of your level of intelligence. Habitually, <laughs> habitually we are taught that our blackness cannot enter white spaces without a code, without code switching. Without it, their minds will be glitching, trying to compute our vernacular, but this voice is spectacular. It is the purest form of your articulated thoughts, like rainwater at the impurities have been vaporized. That other voice is not the real thing, just poorly plagiarized you, universalized you. Stop treating your voice like the cat that disappears when company's around, boo. But I know you feel most vocally comfortable when you're around your best friends. Finger waves become commas, and claps encapsulate words like bookends. But you can't just roll your neck and refuse to articulate in a professional setting. Why not? All right. Yeah, but so basically her whole point is that like, she has okay, different voices for different okay things. Yeah. So like different, everything and everything she question, thinks okay. is like boils down cause, to because of her race. So it's like she thinks that she, because she's black, she has to change her voice up for authority figures or at work or whatever. But that's like a universal experience. Yeah. If I, if I get pulled over by a cop, I go, hello, how, yes, sir, no, sir. Uh, it's in here, and I'm very polite and very deliberate. Uh, but if I'm talking to you or on the show, I'm like a brain-dead idiot. Exactly. So... It obviously is a little different, but everything for her boils down to a race experience. Mm -hmm. And then it also goes the other way, too, where it's like, oh, I'm getting pulled over because I'm black. Or, oh, I'm um, getting spoken to in a rude way because I'm black. Or I'm not getting picked for a job because I'm black. So everything like this person experiences in their worldview, they attribute back to race when you're just having like a human experience. Yeah. If my boss is here. I'm sitting up right and I'm like, hey, how's it going? Oh, it's good. Oh, we're working on this. And everything's more professional and like fast and paying attention. Uh, but if I'm more relaxed at home with my friends, I talk like a retard. Yeah. And that's just what it is. He says, what means? Yeah. How money goes up more? How makes more money? Yeah. 
<laughs> Which ticker do I buy to go up? Her her tone and manic pacing reminded me a lot of those debate team champions from yeah. that viral video. So this whole thing, it all just boils down to everything has to be about race. Of course. And that's how obsessed people are over it. Well, and if nobody was racist against her, what's she going to talk about at the open mic night? Yeah. You know, what's she going to come in with? My cat died. <laughs> I didn't feed it food, you know, <laughs> yeah. like it's nothing. So it has to be for it to be meaningful or powerful or moving art. She has to lean into the racism or the race dynamic. Otherwise, what you're just talking about yourself, right? Yeah. And this is a way to talk about yourself while making it about everyone who's like you. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. So everything is about race. It's all about race. Uh, any inconvenience this person has or any pushback in society in any way it's because i'm a black woman you don't want to see a black woman get a home loan or yeah or you don't want to see a black woman get a, a b plus on the test ma'am your credit score is 450 i legally cannot lend to you yeah. you ma'am, know ma'am you got a 72 on the test yeah i don't know what to I do knew. that's it's pass fail it's yeah. it was a scantron yeah it was bubbles all right let's move on don't get too down don't get too depressed we're moving on to urban decay yeah we have been a good urban decay yeah urban uh, decay is i think one of our best uh, guy starts a guy gets into a fight with the knife guy, and his wife almost kills him. <laughs> this is in Chicago, I think. And the street rat has a knife. Yes. So the street rat has a knife. Play, pay close attention to the woman. Yeah. This whole time. You see her grabbing both of his arms from behind. That's good. We can we can we can play, we can play it in the background as it's going. Yeah. But the wife comes in and grabs both of his arms from behind like this. So that's how you get your husband killed. Yeah. That's you open up his jugular to the street rat offender. And then she also gets in between her husband and the guy with the knife, pretending that they're not in a knife fight right now. Yeah. And this guy is rational, and I'm just going to stand in. And, like, I think women do this a lot where they think they're more rational. Or they can de-escalate it and tensions are too high. And which she's right. This yeah. guy shouldn't be – this guy shouldn't – she's right, but you can get, be a lot more wrong exactly. in this situation. Like, it's right. right. Never fight. Yeah. But this guy's got a knife out and your husband's squaring off against a guy with a knife right now. And you want to hold his one arm back? And you want to hold his one arm back so we can get stabbed in the neck? Yeah. So it's like, oh, yeah, don't fight, don't fight. Okay, good advice. The fight's already on. The guy has a knife. Don't get in between it. Don't hold me back. And not only knife fights, but this is fist fights as well. Let me tell you this, I guess, as a general rule. I've seen a lot of women try to break up a fight, right? Mm -hmm. Drunk, whatever, sloppy. I've never seen a woman actually break up a fight. I have seen a lot of women get knocked out or get their partners knocked out yeah. during that. Yeah. So I've never seen a woman successfully go, Mike! Pick them up and move them away. Mm -hmm. But I have seen multiple people get knocked out as a result. Who and didn't then you need hold to. your husband's arm back. He gets knocked out, maybe stabbed, maybe killed. And then you get the ick. Yeah. You get oh, the ick and then you leave anyway. Down. So what was the point of the whole intervention? And you can't hold him back. So all you're doing is handicapping him for the fight. All right, yeah. let's move on. So that's an urban decay tip. Yeah. For the ladies. Don't get involved. Don't get involved if it's already too late. Yep. All right, we have some looting. We have the 7-Eleven looting and a Philly looting. This was a this was a takeover in Sacramento County. Free. Hey, if the lights are on, it's free. Come in, do whatever they want. And everyone's saying, cover your face, cover your face. So, like, the people filming are on the looter side. Yeah. And what we see a lot is looting like this happens when stuff is popping off elsewhere in the world. Yeah, I think so. Like, oh, Israel and Hamas are going at it. Oh, shit. 7-Eleven's wide open. <laughs> if they can hang glide in, if they can hang glide into Israel, commit war crimes, I can get some snacks. 7-Eleven's wide open. I think, and I think that's what we saw a lot during 2020. It was like, and, and it's the same thing for illegal immigration, too. You see looting, more looting happens. You see illegal immigration, more illegal immigration happens. They think it's easy. It's like a, it, it's a self-fulfilling Prophecy. It's like a green something. light. Exactly. Like a global green light. And then here's another one from Philly. This yeah. is a Rite Aid in Philly. Here's Philly getting ran through by just 30 people. 30. Guy brings his bike in. Yeah. Probably can't leave it outside because it'll get stolen. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> Imagine one of the looters takes his bike instead. <laughs> Um, so I, we were talking about this a little bit and, uh, have you ever seen an all white looting group? I don't think I have. I'm looking for one. Yeah. So if anyone in the audience has ever seen an all white looting group, please send it to me. Cause I'm trying to prove a point for scientific reasons. It's yeah. Da it's data. Yeah, exactly. So please, if you see one, send that to me. Cause otherwise I haven't seen that. Yeah. Me neither. I have not seen a full white group, uh, looting, also, I do hear people say, oh, looting has nothing to do with race. Looting is all about low income. People with no money, that's who loots and steals. And we actually have a graph that debunks that. Yeah, we've kind of showed some similar stuff, but this was a database of 21 million Americans born between 78 and 83. Uh, the, the guy who did the study knows their parents' income when the kids were between 11 and 22 years old. And if they were in jail on April 1st, 2010, when they were about 30, and how much income they reported when they were in their mid-30s. So this is a graph of Raj Chetty's data, uh, percent of incarcerated black and white men versus their parents' income percentile. So basically it does say that the lower income people tend to be arrested more, but the difference in white versus black is the red line. Yeah, And it shows how disproportionate it is where poor black people are outperforming poor white people when it comes to looting and stealing and crime and getting arrested and going to jail. Yeah. So, you know, is it a cultural thing? Is it a, it, it, the left, that's the left's biggest thing. They just say, oh, well, it's poverty. It's all poverty. It explains away. It's their magic wand. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we're on a constant battle for truth. We're constantly seeking out, well, what's real? You can't just say that. We need to look. Um, and we're constantly proven that there's also big differences between the races, even when controlling for income. So yeah. even when you control for income, uh, black people outperform and are more incarcerated. <laughs> outperform. For, outperform in a bad way. Um, and then also there was a, a tweet about a, no, it was a Reddit post about a, a white teacher who doesn't discipline her black students. So this yeah. could kind of like play into it where it's like how races are perceived by progressive white people. Well, this is a new phenomenon, right? This like, is very so, new. Or at least last 15 years, yeah. right? So this teacher says, I'm a white teacher in a diverse school. I have read, heard, seen that students of color are disproportionately written up, disciplined, and suspended from school. I know student mental health issues are at an all-time high. I know the data. My question is, what do I do when it's the students of color that are the ones causing 90% of the fights, disruptions, defiance, etc.? I have white kids do the same thing, but not at the same rate. I am conscious of the data, and I don't write kids up unless the behavior warrants it. We have the same expectations for all students. We have the same supports for all students. I have the same compassion and empathy for all students. How do I make a difference to change the data? See, that's the problem. You're trying to change the data, which would mean manipulate the data, which would mean not be clear on what the data is showing. Well, and it would also mean I'd like to change reality, please. Yeah. I'd like, I, I'm, I'm goal seeking on this little percentage, this little piece of paper right here. Mm -hmm. How can I cook these books, basically, is what yeah. she's asking. Right? And some kids are just built different. Some kids are just little pieces of shit, lo thrive on negative attention and love to be disruptive. Yeah. You know, I was kind of one of those kids. I was very disruptive when I was a little kid. Hmm. but I was smart yeah. and <laughs> I made it out. You, know? you didn't get in like a lot, a lot of trouble. You didn't do anything that was going to get you in jail. Exactly. I wasn't built for sitting around in class for eight hours a day, but you know, I still was built for retaining all the knowledge and reading at grade level and yeah. getting into an Ivy league school. Yeah. So I'm built different, but you know, some kids are built different in that way and then also can't read. Yeah, exactly. I talked to Mimetic Sisyphus about this uh, and he said when he went to high school, like 15 years ago, uh, there was a stat from a teacher that was read to him where it was like, America is racist because one in four black men will end up in jail yeah. over the years. And then the medic Sisyphus said, doesn't that mean that they're just committing more crimes and going to jail for committing crimes? And the teacher said, that's racist to him. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole goal is to not deal with reality, not look at the data, and then anyone who kind of pushes back and wants to, you label that person a racist, so then they hesitate to, and then everyone else kind of backs off, and then you can kind of paint the fake picture you want to paint. Of course. It's a tale as old as time. And it's like, okay, so yeah, so they got set up. Oh, the cops are planting drugs on people? Let's let's move to just murders then. Yeah. Let's go to where someone died and there's a cold body on the ground. 
Mm-hmm. Are those people white or are those people black or what? You know? And then people will say, oh, the murder rate, white people kill more people uh, or white people's, you know, they're not getting caught and going to jail as much as black people. They're always trying to make excuses. Yeah. And there was actually a memetic Sisyphus tweet about this that really summed it up nicely. Can you read the original and then his response? Uh, yeah, this ty- this leftist type goes, when most of the cops are in brown neighborhoods, it makes people of color seem inherently criminal in crime statistics. If cops were everywhere equally, there wouldn't be such big drug problems in West Virginia and Idaho. But cracking down too hard on white people makes POC look too good. This is just like some narrative for, yeah. that you made up yourself or I don't mm-hmm. know. You kind of misinterpreted a woke essay. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mimetic Sisyphus said, in order for per capita murder rates between blacks and white uh, to be the same, there would have to be 40,000 unreported white murderers a year. There are only 22,000 murders by all race reported a year. So that really debunks it. That's pretty damning. That's why we like Mimetic Sisyphus so much. He's so smart, and he puts it very nicely into words that you can understand, which is why we always tell you guys to follow him. He's on Twitter and Instagram. Links are in the description. Consigliere, friend of the show, friend of real life. Hmm. We, we, what do you mean? No, you don't like him in real I've life. Never met him in real life. We never met him in real life, but he's still a friend. He's yeah. my friend. Well, they, you, not in real life. Yeah, he is. No, not in real life. If I needed a favor, what, or, what, or if have, he needed what, a favor, when's the last time you talked face to face? Never. <laughs> so that's not in real life. But if he needed a favor, or if I needed a favor, I think he would do it, and I would do it too. I agree, but I that doesn't mean in real life. In real life, words matter, and Mimetic Sisyphus would agree with me on this one that words matter. All right, but real life has merged with online life into one life. That's true. I'll give you that, but it, it's not in We're real We're friends. Life. We're friends. All right, let's move on. Uh, there was that football brawl. So there's another thing about just bad kids. I, it's a football brawl. Just fucking the parents, the kids, punching people with the helmet on. People are just swinging on everyone. Everyone's swinging on everyone. This, oh, there's a white kid in the mix. There he is. This is probably the part where you hear blah, 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 <laughs> pow, 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 and the whole thing shuts off. Let that thing talk. Yeah, so sad. Pathetic. Yeah, pathetic, you know? sad. Yeah. Any That's other bad. commentary on that? No. It's just a joke. It's pathetic. It's like, how do you get to that point? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'll also look for a white version of that as well, if you guys have it. I'll I was that. involved in one when I was a kid. I mean, they definitely happen. A bunch but, of Italians. Yeah, it happens. It happened. And then my dad went on the field and got the whole team on one side and said, come over here. Everyone stay over here. At what age group? That sounds like little kid shit. Uh, I was probably in sixth grade. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating. But my dad didn't jump in and start fighting everybody. He didn't pull his Glock with the switch out and let that thing talk. <laughs> he should have. He was close. Big Steve just handled it. And he said, had Cardinals the Glock are... with the switch in the back of his <laughs> pants, and he said, no, not this time. He said, Cardinals, over here, and we all listened. And then the adults fought. And then some guy was fighting some other guy. And then this lady was clawing at him because he was beating up her husband and he didn't see her. And he turned around and boom, he knocked her out. See, there's another example of the women never break up the fight, but they yeah. do get knocked out. And he just out. turned around and threw a punch and then it knocked out a lady. Tough. And then he wasn't allowed to go to the rest of the games, but then he'd go on the sidelines, like in, Far the, away. in the stands. And he would kind of give us like signs from the sidelines. Nice. Yeah. So we all, we all do shit like that. For sure. All right, last thing, the Ebony Alerts. It says, California just created the Ebony Alert to find missing black children. The Ebony Alert will be used for missing black people ages 12 to 25. Wow. 25 is pretty much an adult. Yeah. By a I, lot. I, I, part of me doesn't even think that this should go to 17 for, like, normal kids. Yeah. That's kind of runaway age. That's not kidnapped, child snatched. Once you can drive a car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so they're treating, they're kind of giving black people like baby treatment. Yeah. Into law. So it's systemic racism. It's only for black people. Systemic racist thing. Yeah. And up to 25 years old. Where's Jarquavion? Jarquavion, where are you? (laughs) Oh, Jarquavion. He only graduated high school seven years ago. Oh, Jarquavion. He only has one year left on his parents' insurance. We need to find him and bring him back. (laughs) Yo, uh, oh shit. I just got an alert. Sean Drekica's missing. She just rented a car last week. Where is Sean (laughs) Drekica? So, I mean, it's so bad, man. Uh, the data shows black and brown are indigenous brothers and sisters when they go missing. There's very rarely the type of media attention, let alone Amber Alerts. So it's like an anger thing. They they did a retaliatory 
Like, oh, we're not getting enough, so we need to go above and beyond for 25-year-old kids. And everyone's phone's going to be buzzing off the hook with another weird name of someone who's, like, temporarily missing. Yeah, uh, Darquavion in a Nissan Altima with all missing rims. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody be on the lookout. for Yeah, a black Nissan Altima with tinted windows that are illegal and no license plates. Oh, shit, Sean Drekica's in a Hellcat <laughs> going down. <laughs> All right, we got to move on. Don't get too down. Don't get too depressed. We're moving on to Uplifting Gold. We have some Uplifting Gold that makes it all okay. The world gets ugly, but Uplifting Gold makes you feel better and not get too down and too depressed. Yeah. The football hit, the flag football hit is the first one. This one jacked up. No audio on this, but they kick off to a girl in like a girl's league, and then you get fucking wrecked. <laughs> You're just toast, and everyone's got hands on the face like, what the fuck just happened? That was a good one. Good hit. Yeah. Sign good hit. Clean. Clean. Send you a base mug if that's you. Women, that's kind of the risk you run when you're getting in the way of your man fighting, too. Yeah. That type of knockout. That's who you're going to run into. Um, NHL's not doing gay shit anymore. This is uplifting. Yeah. The NHL bans all theme night gear, which only happened because of pride, Includes pr including prime symbols from uniforms. Uh, you know, that was kind of like, okay, we won't ban pride, but we're just going to ban everything on theme night and that'll get us out of pride. Right. Smart. And so here's, this is a chart that shows where fandoms kind of are, how their voter turned out. And you can see the NHL is squarely in the red yeah. turning out for Republicans along with the PGA tour is kind of one of the most. It's important to embrace what we got. And that's what I was going to say. Like, the NFL, too, right here, like, the NFL's done some gay shit, right? Yeah. BLM, end racism, all that. But those are our guys who like it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm a little mixed feelings on that. That's why you can't just abandon whatever institutions we do have. Because then they'll do it, you know? Like, we can't we can't create, we can't do, oh, somebody better call the law, new music. We mm -hmm. can't create a whole new music industry. Uh, NASCAR, college football. College football is much more red than the NFL is, which is fascinating. Um, and so it's good to see one of ours, the NHL, is now coming back to the mean uh, and getting away from it. And I, f I thought this was a funny line. In this article, Jeff McLean, a, a spokesperson for Pride Tape, said the company is extremely disappointed by the NHL's decision. We hope the league and all teams will, again, show commitment to this important symbol of combating homophobia. And it's like, your company is literally Pride Tape, the one mm -hmm. who, the one company who's selling the gay tape to the NHL. <laughs> Pride Tape's really upset You're, about this. Yeah, yeah, Martian's really upset about the U.S. going to Mars. You know, it's yeah. like, okay, bro, yeah, we'll trust your unbiased opinion. Let the adults get back to work. Stop doing gay shit. The NHL is right. Yeah. Right-leaning. We got to embrace what we got. We have NHL. We have the PGA Tour. We have NASCAR, bull riding, college football, shit like that. We're not going to abandon. Yeah. We have to make it ours. And yeah. golf's a great one. And the NFL is a borderline one. They really push their luck. They're mm -hmm. really pushing their luck. And I know some of you are in various states of... Well, your relationship with yeah, the NFL. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's, it's for every man to navigate on themselves, but... I caution people from giving up. Yeah. We especially golf. We got to golf is ours. Yeah. We got to hold golf down. Golf is ours. Um all right, let's move on. The fish catch before the wedding. This guy is fishing before a wedding. That's a big one too. It looks like he caught a big pike. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's a big one. Oh, it is a big one. Jesus. Oh my great catch. God. You can fast forward to when he pulls it out. The man, I says, what are you going to do if you catch he's getting, one? He's getting covered in shit. <laughs> On a spoon. Look at that. It's like a 30-inch pike. He, and he yells, hey, Dad. That's nice. And he's, look at him. He's got shit all over. It's <laughs> kind of an RRB type. Yeah. That's, that's pure, good. Yeah, that's pure Americana. That's Americana. That's nice. People are getting married, and you caught a fish before because you like to fish. That's nice stuff. <laughs> yeah. Was that for the blind people? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, last clip. The grandson and grandpa. I'm a grandson. I'm a grandson. I got a grandson. I got a grandson. What are we going to do with him? What are you going to do with you? <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with me. What are you going to do? Well, I got to keep him. You you make a mess. I don't make, make a mess. A mess. Ah, you. Mandero. 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 
Isn't that nice? That is nice. That's the other side of it. That's the spots. That's the stuff you don't see. That's what we do it for. Cringe of the week and stuff like that. Get them into urban. Giuseppe's garage. Yep. Nice kids like that. That's pure Americana. That's why we do it. That's what life's all about. Don't get too down and too depressed from all the dark shit on the show. What's this last thing? I don't know. Pro-life Spider-Man climbed the uh, yeah. Accenture Tower in Chicago. Cool. So this week, the show is over. The end of the show, as we do on every Friday, we uh, shout out pro-America small businesses and people. This week's shout out is pro-life Spider-Man, Mason DeChamps. Uh, he climbs buildings uh, to promote a pro-life message. This is an easy building, too. You see these hand grips that he's got yeah, around really, the poles? It looks super easy. So that was an easy day for him. <laughs> well, I mean, he's done the shit in between two walls and stuff recently. So He's great. He does this all the time. And he gets arrested after, uh, but he does spread a really good pro-life message. Make sure you guys follow him on Instagram. He's a friend of the show, friend of mine. I guess not friend in real life because I never met him. Yeah, exactly. Yes, you understand the use of words, don't you? But we are He's friends. not your friend in real life. Thank you. Yes, he is. My real life is is the show real life. Are yeah. they are are there, are there people We're, who watch the show our friends? They don't know us in real life, some of them. So no, they're not our real life friends. Unless you've met me in real life, you are not my real life friend. Words matter. You're like Hamas over here. You're Hamas. Do you hear this? This is real. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a living in reality. <sighs> I, go, ask Mimetic Sisyphus, say, are we in real life friends? And he'll probably say yes, just to not upset you, get you thrashing around like a pig in the water. <laughs> but, but you, I'm friends you're with not Mimetic, in real is life. Mimetic Sisyphus is real name. I'm friends with Mimetic Sisyphus. Well, now you're talking about something else. And uh, as soon What's as you, real life, as soon as you say real life, you stop you stop making sense. I think this is all real life, and it's one thing. Online, offline, real life. You could say my friend on the internet, my computer friend. Yeah. Admit you're wrong. I'm not wrong here. You've I'm never close. met him in real life. He's not your real life friend. I'm close. Pro-Life Spider-Man is our friend in real life. Make sure you guys follow no, him. Not. He climbs buildings and does a pro-life message. He's a very nice guy, very nice pro-life guy, nice Christian man, and he spreads a great message, and he's very talented. Make sure you guys follow him. He's a friend of the show. That's fair. And a friend of mine in real life. No, that's <laughs> where you lose it. And that's another Fleckus Talks in the Books. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. FleckusMerch.com for the best merch in the game. Make sure you go to FleckusTalks.com and join us in Bonus Land. We have a Bonus Land today with really good clips and a little bit of a Q&A. We have some Q&A stuff for Bonus Land as well. Uh, so make sure you guys sign up there. FleckusTalks.com is the website. It's linked in the description and the pinned comment. Uh, please join or else I'll work at Domino's. And I, and I don't care. I'll work at Domino's. Yeah, he'll eat a slice before he delivers it. Not above that. That's what he's do That's what he does. But you know, so please join, and we will hang out with you in Bonus Land, which drops right now. And if we don't see you there, we will see you on Tuesday. Thanks for calling Domino's. This Domino's is now hiring for all positions, offering flexible, full, and part-time hours. 